Checkpoint's quantum network security comes with two components, a management station, which will look after policy, rules, logging and reporting information, and a firewall module that will look after the enforcement of those configurations. Both the management station and firewalls have a number of different deployment options from on-premise hardware, on-premise virtualization to public cloud infrastructure. The most popular combination typically tends to be an on-premise virtualized machine for the management station and physical tin hardware appliances for the enforcement points. And that's what we're going to go through in this video. Just a couple of notes here. We are going to configure two interfaces on the firewall and one interface on the virtual machine that has our management component. This tool is called the Checkpoint Upgrade Wizard. It allows you to step through the menus and find the exact version of software that you need for your specific deployment. For this video, we're going to select the security management server. We're going to select VMware ESXi, and we'll select the version of ESXi hypervisor we're using and the checkpoint operating system Gaia. And I'm gonna download our latest version, R81.20. Once you've selected that version, simply click download. You might need login credentials to be able to get this. Once that's downloaded, copy that ISO file onto your VMware data store. Now, when building the virtual machine for the management server, these are the minimum requirements. We would recommend a little bit more where possible. Link will be in the description to the specifics of this. Mount the ISO file and power on that virtual machine. You'll be prompted with this specific boot menu. Click install Gaia on this system. This will completely format this machine, so be careful with what you're doing this to. Select the language. In my instance, it's going to be Great Britain. And if you wish to, you can choose to expand the amount of storage space you provide this virtual machine. Give this system an administrative password for basic level admin tasks and a maintenance mode for a more of an expert access to the system. We're going to select the IP address that this system is going to particularly need and click OK and again OK. And when we do that, it will proceed to install the operating system in the background of the system. This will take a few minutes. This video has been sped up. Now, once that's completed and you try and access the CLI of that system, you'll notice that it will redirect you and ask you to go to the web portal wizard. Quickly open up your browser and in a secure HTTPS connection, pop in the IP address of your server, log in with the admin username and password credentials that we put in the previous part of the video, select next, choose to continue the configuration with R8120, just the base build. There are other options there, but they're not for this part of the video. Fill in some specific information about your server, give it a name, a domain record, and some DNS servers that you may need in the future. Set the NTP for a time synchronization. We're going to choose to turn this one into just a management server. We do not want it to interact as a security gateway. Click next for the GUI clients. That will be explained in a later video. And then click finish. This is going to configure this specific system to your needs to make sure that it is specifically a management station and not a firewall enforcement point. And there we go, we're pretty much ready to go. Now to access this system and make changes to your rule base and policies, you need to download a tool called Checkpoint Smart Console. So click on the download link at the top there. It will take you through to a link, click download, double click to and execute this particular installer file and allow the installation to complete on your Windows system. Once that's completed the installation, type in the username and password and the IP address given to that server. Confirm the fingerprint that's been provided to ensure the certificate that's on that server. Make a record of that if you can. And there we have it. We have a working management platform that you can then start to configure your security policies and other configurations that may be needed. Now we need to go and set up our firewall. In this particular video, I'm using a 3200 appliance. The default IP address of the management interface is 192.168.1.1. So we will configure that interface and we'll change that to match our local network. So simply browse again in your browser with HTTPS to the IP address of the management station and log in with the username admin admin. So we're going to step through this first time wizard, click next. Again, it will ask us what type of configuration. We're just going to click next for now for the basics. Give it a, a simple administration and expert password for the future. And here is where we're going to reconfigure the IP addresses that we have on that particular uh, interface card. 
This may disconnect us from our system, so we might have to change our local Windows IP address to match. Also, I'm gonna set up a second IP address for this system, and I'm gonna give it a host name and DNS records, just like before. Once the NTP settings are set up, you can see here that that one is specifically set up as a security gateway and not a management station. We'll click next. I do not want this gateway to have a dynamic address. We're gonna use static IPs. And this is something quite specific to Checkpoint. You need to create what is called a secure internal communication key or a SIC key. This is a specific one-time use password that will be used later to establish trust between the Checkpoint firewall and its management station. And click finish and again, like the management platform, this will go away and it will configure that solution for you. Log in with the admin and the new password that you've created. And this will give us again access to the web interface to specifically configure this platform. Now we need to connect the two systems together. We have our management platform and our firewall and we're gonna connect them together. Going back to Smart Console, click on the star at the top for new, click gateway and select the wizard mode or classic mode, whichever suits you. Put in the name that you've just given this firewall, give it the IP address that you allocate to that system. So we're gonna unpin that sick key that we used earlier. We're gonna pop that one time password in and it's gonna retrieve those IP addresses that we configured. And we can see that we have a connection to that platform now. Trusted communication has been established. Now, once we've done this, we can come in and again, we can double click on that object and we can enable different security features or as Checkpoint call them blades, different feature sets that may be required to configure your environment. And we can start to configure the system that's in place there. Now, before we do this, we want to be able to push our first policy, make our changes to our first gateway. Now, if you click on the left hand side here, you can see that there is a rule called the cleanup rule. This is what we sometimes refer to as the any, any, any drop rule, meaning that if there's any traffic that comes through this firewall and doesn't have a rule that allows the traffic, it will catch this at the bottom and it will block all traffic that isn't specifically allowed through. I'm going to create a rule above this, which is going to provide administrative access to the management platform and to the firewall so we can continue to admin this system in the future once a policy has been pushed. So we're going to cl right click on that and say add new rule above. So I'm just going to hover over the source column, a little plus will appear. And again, we're going to click that star for new and select host. We're going to give this the name of my machines. So this is just M Manning test machine and the IP address of my test environment. I'm also going to set up hide NAT, meaning that any connections that leave the firewall will hide behind the firewall's interface if I'm going to the internet. Now, if I also want to select objects on the far right hand side here, we have the object viewer, which we'll go into a bit more in later um, videos. And if I wish, I can just drag one of those objects from that side there into it. Or again, I can click that plus button and I can search there. So there's a number of ways in Checkpoint that you can find the objects to help you create the rules that you're needed. Now in this particular rule, I'm gonna add the services uh, SSH, HTTPS, and ICMP to give me a sort of administrative CLI and web UI access to that platform. I'm gonna accept that traffic, I'm gonna log it so I get to see um, those logs coming in. I'm gonna specifically apply these rules to our London firewall, making sure that they're the firewalls that are going to be enacting this. And I also want to modify that cleanup rule as well so that any traffic that does hit our firewall, even if it's blocked, we will track that as well. It's a very, very simple policy that's in place. Lastly, what we're going to do is click on the install policy button up the top left hand corner there. We're going to publish these changes so they're saved and then we're going to install them so they get pushed down to that firewall, that 3200 appliance, to make sure that they can start enacting that policy that's in place. So we can see the policy process has just started and then it's going to be pushed out to our gateway of choice. Let's give that a couple of seconds to do its thing. There we go, that's completed. Now, once that's completed, we just want to confirm that we still have access to that, those systems. So I'm going to quickly pop back to my admin machine and I've got a couple of pre-saved uh, SSH connections here. We can see here, I can still SSH into those servers and I still have administrative access to this platform. So if you quickly head over to the web interface, you can see here that the features on the far right hand side, firewall, IPSEC, application control, and URL filtering were the features that we enabled, which means that that policy has been pushed and that those functions and features will now start to take effect on the environment. 
Hopefully this video has been of some use. It has showed how quick and easy it is to set up a checkpoint management platform and a firewall enforcement point. In future videos, we're going to show how to connect this to the internet and start passing traffic through this and start routing your business's network traffic through our firewalls and start writing your own security enforcement policies. Thank you for watching. What? <laughs>